Welcome back to Railroads Online. I am River, and we are in our quest to get 200 barrels of oil. I have spent the last three hours hauling lumber back and forth up to the iron mine, but we now have 166 iron, and we are ready to go. Now, I'm slowing down and stopping here because I want to switch trains. Well, at least switch the cars. And the locomotive is, well, it's kind of our only locomotive if you don't count Betsy over there, so. But we're getting pretty close to being able to afford a new locomotive. Let me just stop here before I go the wrong way. And we'll hop out and flip this guy. Let's flip a bunch of things so that we can get to where we need to go. Now, one of the things that I've noticed with this having used this uh, grand rail siding at the grand intersection here is that it's actually kind of easier just to back in anyway. <laughs> it's, so after all my looping and, and everything else, now is this the right way? Yeah, I gotta think and focus. Yeah, this is the right way. See, so in other words, like, I think I'm better off going past here and just backing in. Depends on the situation. If you just want to drop off, but the problem is I want to hook up to another car. So I think my best bet is to come up here and flip this guy, go straight, stop on the tracks up there, which I can see that signal's leaning the right way, which is good. We'll flip it to go back into here once we get past it. And then this one needs to be flipped the other way. So, like I said, we have 166 iron ore ready to go to the smelter and then the other thing that the smelter needs is the cord wood all right so we are gonna let me let me focus on this that way and then this is the right one right because we want to go into where that single car is right there and then all of these are just the other way now when we come back out yep that one's flipped we're just gonna we're gonna have to flip this one well now when we come back out we're just gonna go straight back out that's right and yeah, well, we'll have to flip some switches on the way back out because we'll have flipped them to go back south and we need to go head back north. So I want to put this car, this train right here and hook it up to this one car because when, when it comes to getting the coal mine going, which will be a future episode probably, we're going to want the 13 cars to get the balance of uh, 30 rails and 30 beams. 10 per car on the rails and three per car on the beams. There we go. Gonna need a little bit of fire. We'll go whole hog and put five in there just for the sake of, uh, I, I try to be cheap and then I run out of I run out of steam all the time, and I'm not sure that it's really worth that one piece of firewood <laughs> to to do that. But it is it is a bit of a waste. We'll this fire temperature will get up to 400 here and just kind of sit there. So, but you can see we were getting a little bit low. So on the water temperature. So and that's just from driving back. Well, and then a little run around. So it's even though you might have plenty of water, sometimes it's it's tough because of. Oh, you know what? We do want to stop and get water, too, I think. Yeah, because we're going to go head back all the way up to the iron mine. That'll be the first trip of this episode. And bring down... We have 166, so that should be three trips. Now, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to do all three trips. I'll have to think about it more when I'm not... over-focusing on not crashing. But... We should be able to bring them down. I know I, I'm pretty sure I have about 84 cordwood that are already in the smelter from, from a previous trip. So that means that I should be able to bring down all of the iron ore. And even if I have to leave... Oh, what am I doing? Break. See, this is what I'm talking about. I need to focus. Breaking's fine, but focusing is better. All right, slow down. Seem to be running past these a lot these days. Not, not right then, but... I'm getting a little bit better at this. I think they've adjusted it. <laughs> at 
some point. Yeah, come over there and check. That should be filling. I mean, if that's not filling, right, but it is. There we go. By the time we get out, it'll be full. There we go. Close the lid. Come on. Really? There you go. <laughs> that was tough. Here we go. Full of water, full of heat. We're in business. Give it a little extra to get going. Yeah, so we'll back into here. We'll get rid of these. We'll hook up to our iron ore train. Now, there's, I'm, I'm thinking a lot about where we should leave things. Like, does it make sense to bring this train all the way back down here? And I think the answer is definitely yes, because we have to get... 10 loads of beams will be the next thing that we need here. So just trying to figure out like where these rail cars are best left. Like, would it make sense to buy a whole nother train of these cars and have left this over by the smelter? Cause at some point we're going to probably have to like, like maybe even deadhead a train back down to some place. Like I don't mind if I'm moving empty cars cause that's just part of what we have to do. Give it a little gas here. We can. But my concern is that we would spend too much time, like deadheading, meaning like you're just driving the train itself. I guess I I don't know if they call that with trains. It's usually what they'll say with trucks. When you're not carrying any kind of a trailer or a load or anything. Make sure that switch was in the right spot. It's always good to double check in this game, especially the ch when you're coming into the Y. <laughs> it's the derailer. And I'll tell you what, the more I've played the game, the more of these shadows. I don't want them to give the game time because as a single player, I would turn off time right now. And, and because like if you look, I can see when my train gets past that switch because of that shadow. Like, I can see my shadow is there, and I still have a little ways to go, and I can probably start hitting the brakes because we're getting close. See, and then to the point where I've actually been cutting down some trees that break up my shadow. See, like, that's... See, I'm, I'm there now. I can see that that switch is fully in the shadow. It might be hard to see on YouTube, but it is... And that's true at a lot of the depots. See that? Kind of perfect. All right, now hopefully we got all the other switches right. We'll get back right in there and... First run. So now I have a little bit of a debate. Do you guys want to ride along with this trip, which we've effectively made before, right? So in other words, we've gone from the sawmill anyway to the iron mine. I think I again we'll probably show each trip once to give a real flavor, because it is a separate trip. It is from the smelter the iron mine but what i think i might do is maybe show you guys the second trip right like i'll head over there well i'll head all the way up to the iron mine with these hopper cars and then i'll once i get up there we'll we'll drive down and we'll we'll make a loop from the iron mine over to the smelter then you will see like all the switch flipping i don't have to because i want to show you guys the yard work what's involved and a lot of you will have the game and know it. Other people will just be watching it for the pure entertainment value. Now this is a little bit downhill here, so I do want to be careful I don't pick up too much speed. Once I get around that switch, past that switch, it's downhill to the next switch. 
I haven't done it this way before, and I have to remember, well, maybe I'll leave that switch for now. This switch we're going to have to flip to be able to go back that way, and then we're going to have to flip this one so that it accepts us from this way. Yeah, I think the problem with going in there and turning around versus what I just did is just a lot more switch flipping. Or at least it felt that way. Maybe it wouldn't always be, but there's a lot of switches in there that you need to keep straight. If you had an assistant f switch flipper, did I say that right? Yeah, switch flipper. Then it wouldn't be quite so bad. Yep, we appear to be on the right track. And then I think what I want to do at some point, we'll see how long it takes. It's quite a trip from here up to the iron mine and back and loading. It took about close to an hour to get get all that done. Let me get some a lot more break on. A lot more break on. All right. I don't know if I'm there or not, but I do want to get out and just check that I have a link. The chances of me having a link are extremely slim, I think. And then, did I stop it that perfectly? No, but we don't have a link. Yeah, there's no way to get one in, so I gotta pull forward a foot. Of course, I thought about the link, <laughs> you know, like, five seconds too late. As I was hitting the brake the first time, I said, you know what, I don't have a link in there. And it took my brain that long to process everything and decide to jam on the brakes. And there we go. Put that reverser back. Hopefully that's enough. Could have gone a little further. I think it does, you don't need much, but it, you do need like a foot or two. I was watching somebody talking about a quarter of a meter, and I thought, yeah, that's called a foot. <laughs> that's, that's why a foot is a good measurement, in my opinion. Not to say there's anything wrong with the meter. It's just a really convenient length in your life. You know, like, there's a lot of things that are in the neighborhood of the size of a foot. Glide back these couple feet. We should be in good shape. Yeah, let's just give it a real little bit of break. Okay. Make sure everything comes to a stop. We do have the brake on that one car, but that's not enough to stop this whole train. So I've noticed that it does tend to, if you have a long train like this, it will tend to push that car away sometimes if you're not a little over careful. Here we go. So we're, we're going to leave this brake on. Set this last one. And we'll have to pull forward and we'll flip the switch to get in. Now we could do the cordwood first, except I, like I said, I'm pretty sure I have 84 cordwood from just past dropping off cordwood runs. I think I needed money at the time. Oops, you know what would be really smart is to actually set this break. Let's, you know what, I want to pull it out of here. And let's go, you know what, I should have done this while I was down there. Let's just go and get, make sure we have a link in here. All right, so I pulled the pin out of the locomotive. And one of the reasons is what? Make me on the side better. One of the reasons is I find it to be a pain. Maybe it's just this locomotive. I don't have a lot of experience with other ones, which is something I want to rectify. All right? We have this that that link there is just harder to get the link in and out of this of the locomotive. I'm going to 
do is when I'm up here, I'm going to go flip those other two switches as well. How's my heat doing? Use more soon. So I need to get past that switch right there. All right, and then we want to go to this one. All right, and then we'll run over here. I guess it's just as well to do it now. As... And then this one needs to let us come back out. And then this one needs to send us out. And we should be good to go. Going the wrong way, buddy. There you go. Yeah, there's definitely something odd about the physics. I, I don't know if it stores up energy somehow. Like, why would that guy go forward a little bit? If there's any hill at all, it's downhill this way. Though I don't think there's... By the time I hit those switches, I think it were level this whole way. It's, it's just in between those two switches right there. It's a little bit downhill. Why would that guy ever run forward a tiny bit? Makes almost no sense to me. Well, physics, I mean, I mean, maybe there's something that's happening that's legitimate, but it just seems pretty odd. It's almost like it, the resting physics is actually the issue, like, if there is one. Now, another question would be, could we get more cars? And I think absolutely, if we could afford another bigger locomotive, then I would... Definitely consider ramping up the number of cars at that point. But it's also, before we get into too many more cars and everything else, it's where I want to really see this 200 barrels of oil, while it's, I think, an interesting YouTube conversation. I think it's also a good idea for the sake of me learning exactly how I want to do the train logistics. Yeah. Now, wait a second. I look. I took the pin out, but the pin stayed. Nah, are you kidding me? Let me show you what I mean. I I know I took the pin out. You can see there's no pin in it, but it gave me the link <laughs> with, with this car. Look, see that? I had a link in there somehow. Yeah, that was definitely a bit of a a little bit of a bug, huh? Why do I have a link? Now, did I take the link out of the other? There we go. Let's go. I'm going to go check. Well, let's see. Where's the brake? Let's take the brake off. Yeah, let's just head over here. Do we have the link? Oh, it's way up there. I need to, no, I don't need to flip anything. We should be in good shape. Now that we still have, look, we took the link out of there. Even though that pin is still in it, it took the link with the locomotive. All right, now we have a link in there. Because I'm thinking it might be good to leave those links. <laughs> but that didn't work. That It absolutely stole the link out of there in the opposite way that it should have. And I need to set this other brake. So we only have five cars. But five cars is half of the 100 that I think we need. So it's like if I were to get a six car, it's kind of saving me. I'd have to get up to like, say, eight cars before it would, or at least six or seven, you know, before it really would get to the 150 we need to haul. Like we could haul 160 of those. But then I think we're kind of stretching you know, what this train should be able to do. Yeah, put five in, a little bit of, usually a little wasteful to put five in, but we're good. 
right? I just feel like Betsy here, oops, let's not go backwards. Now it makes sense that it's going backwards. There we go. Right, I just feel like these are big, I mean, iron ore has to weigh more, <laughs> like a cart full of iron ore. This has to weigh a lot more than lumber. Not not that lumber's light, but it's just not the same thing as iron either. So, yeah, you know, I just feel like this would be. Like I said, I think we could put more on there, but I just feel like this is a realistic-ish kind of thing to do. And we'll get a maybe one day. Like I'd really like to get up to ten cars on a bigger locomotive. To me, that would that would be kind of a nice goal for the iron ore hauling train so let me cut the video here it's kind of been long enough just doing this yard work but i do want to show some of that and the trials and tribulations and like i said i'm going to drive just right back up to the to the iron mine and then once once i'm starting to pull in there or once i'm in there probably i'll load up most of the rail cars and then we'll head back down from there and kind of do the loop and that should be, you know, pretty good for the length of the video. And we'll have gotten iron ore down to our smelter. That'll be a, a nice next step. And we can talk about what we need to do for cordwood, which is, if you're talking about the coordination of cordwood, we also have some firewood stands that I've never dropped off any cordwood at. So I, have, I know by the oil refinery, I put one in and I still haven't restocked it. It comes with 400 firewood, so there's no huge urgency because we get that free wood but well, i do want to make it kind of official and uh might as well make that part of this series too because you need firewood to make your 200 barrels of oil there we go so i will see you guys up at the iron mine okay i just got done flipping our switch for the way back out i just put some water into our locomotive and we are Oh, it need to pull it forward. <laughs> I thought I was... Yeah, I, for some reason, I don't have this lined up perfectly for that. I think it lines up better at other times, but I don't know. It's I'm not going to worry about it too much now. It's a bit of a pain nowadays to try to plop these things down with the way they change the... Like you can't climb on the locomotive. I used to climb on the locomotive so I could see right where I wanted to put the thing, but now we need to pull up to this marker over here, which is... A little bit tough there we go all right so now now we're ready to go i just wanted to show this one last loading in case there was anyone who hasn't seen be very careful if you don't know that this thing will just keep pouring out on the ground forever so if you what i do is i look at the number that i have 126 and we're going to put 10 in here so we need to take it down to 116. I open up the one and then the other there's no reason to panic, but you do have to be on top of your game here. You do have to pay attention. Usually when I get within about three, I will pull up the one and then get ready to do the other one. See, so like we're, see, because all of a sudden something like that happens, and now you're down to 17. You know what I mean? It'd be, it's reasonably easy to put a little bit too much in if you're not on top of your game. <laughs> it's not... I think you need to panic about, but there we go. So we got 10 in there, 10 off the total. So now we have 116 up here, no lumber, no beams, the perfect, you know, combination each time. And we will get on down to the smelter. So I'll probably end up taking at least one more load, if not two. It sort of depends on what we find when we have down there. My spreadsheet that I made to keep track of all of this stuff. Wonderful. Let's just check. Okay, no fire temperature. We don't need a ton. I think I'm going to go for four. One, two, three, four. All right, do I have any more wood in my hand now? All right, so that should get us plenty. We're going downhill, and we're going a shorter trip than even on the one up here. We should be in, in pretty good shape. Let's make sure everybody's coming with us. And we're not even moving. Let's give it... This is a, a bit of a hill going down into there. We're getting going.
Yeah, like I said, I don't really know what the different. It would be nice to get a list. I should look. Is there a list of the different weights of these cars when they're full and not full, just to get an idea of what's realistic? I would say this was definitely easier to pull these up the hill than the 12 fully loaded uh, wood and beams and, and lumber car. So I think that would be relatively obvious, but it would still be nice to know what the weight percentage was weight difference to kind of gauge it again not maybe not so much because we're we are taking advantage i think a little bit of betsy's or number two's abilities here you know that are a little bit op or a lot op depending on your opinion careful here at this point it starts going downhill and you can get definitely can get I've derailed here even though I don't fully understand why I've derailed there it can happen it's I'm not sure if it was what it was that caused it that one time but this is actually a bit uphill Take it slow going into this turn because then we got the steep, steep downhill. this train's a lot shorter so you don't have to worry like we get off of the steeper spot so even if it is heavier I find that the braking is not not as bad right in other words we're that long train 12 you know seven more cars than this over twice the length you definitely feel it pushing you for longer Here's the sleeper derailer. <laughs> this is the one that will get you. It doesn't look that steep, but it's just, it's a long thing. And if it wasn't, maybe if you didn't have these S turns in it, you could kind of boogie down it a little bit faster, but. But you do have the turns. It's almost like somebody deliberately made it curvy. It certainly could have been made Wait a bit straighter, I think. Somebody must not have known what they were doing when they built this section. And that, that's the worst of it back there. It, was, it gets a little less steep right in through here. And then eventually it gets flat down here. And there's no doubt I definitely want to redo... That might have been a little bit too soon. Let's see. Let's see if we derail. 
we're starting to, we're kind of booking around that turn fairly good for a it's not poorly done but it's not the best turn either This turn right here is definitely too sharp. I think the sharpness of the turn is, is hurting us. Plus it's right after this hill. So it's it's just, I think I really want to straighten that out this way and loop it around a little further. and That will even give us an opportunity to, to uh, do the switching on the flat so we don't have to stop on this hill whenever we want to things now my last trip I won't show it but I will flip that switch right there because our after I get done all the iron ore hauling the next trip up this way would be to the coal mine and I would rather switch it when I'm, I'd stop on this hill which is you know we don't have enough braking to really stop you can see look I'm doing you know 89% and we're still going um, but I can throw these hand brakes and that's enough to keep it on the hill Otherwise, if you have the brakes on, it's not going to go too far. It'll just get down to this. It did that one time. It didn't make it all the way to the bridge before I caught up with it, but that's what would happen. It would just stop up here. This time, a lot of times I give it like 36, but when I'm planning on stopping, I usually give it in the around 40, 44 will be fine. Way I don't embarrass myself on uh, YouTube. <laughs> At least it's not, wow. Not that I haven't done that enough, but a little bit slow. You could go faster, but it's really, you know, we're, once we can see this thing, we really want to be on the brakes, you know, because it's, it's a pr fairly steep downhill for stopping. I don't mind having be a little bit cautious here. There you could do it faster. This this is going to get fixed. That's really annoying me every time I come down here. May or may not do that on camera. There are some things that are just kind of petty that probably aren't worth. I just want to redo the base there, not. But then I have talked about, ah, oh, you know what? I really didn't hit the brakes near soon enough. Let's hope that's you know what? Let's hop out and at least do this one. Make it. <laughs> hey. All right. So let's uh, let's flip whatever else needs to be flipped. Because I'll be making a few trips in and out of here. So this one's right. That one's right. Yeah, I think we should be in good shape because there shouldn't be any train in there. Yeah, well, that's it. Um, as far as this one goes, it doesn't matter. Though I would say that eventually, I guess we're going to need to flip that because we will head south. Once we get these done, we need to head back to get the cordwood cars. Let's take this off. Don't forget. And then how are we doing? We're going to give you... It won't take that long to unload these, so we'll give it a little bit. Just keep the fire going because we're going to turn and burn. This is the steep. This is steep. <laughs> I don't know if it's 10 degree, but it's definitely be careful. And it's all in that one little spot, right? So it's. Right there in particular. So it, it doesn't get better as you get closer, but then you get off of it pretty quickly here. And you know what? 
I'm not even going to stop. I'll stop the next time. So we should have plenty of water. And we could always get more water up there. Remember, we're a little bit shorter trip than the last one. On the way by, I want to note how much stuff we have, just to make sure that my spreadsheet is correct. I think I have 20 and 14. Yep, there's 20 rails. And 14 raw iron. So, yeah, we're definitely going to want three trips down here. And I think we can get it all in and done... We can get it all in, right? Because this will be 50, and if we're right about the other, chances are if those two are right, then this next one's right, that we have 84 cordwood. So that means this whole thing will just go in and, and start processing stuff. What we can't have is, like, an overflow, but because we have 80 and only 14, I think I can get... This whole thing will just get processed almost immediately. This whole rail car, or switched the right way right now. I definitely see a good amount of cordwood sitting there. So this whole thing will just get processed. I bring the next one down. 30 of it will get processed. That'll pretty much fill up. Like those, the processing will be done over there. So we'll, we'll be able to process like 80 of them total, right? So that means if I drop off more, we should be good to go. And if the worst case scenario, we could just leave the cars with the, with the iron ore in them. I'm going to stop this thing right when we get to about the end of those steps. We should be able to get three cars unloaded at one shot. That way. All right, this guy's still the center of this guy's still over here. All right, that's going in. Yep. Yep, that one's going in. See, this one's... Hop back in. Wait till we start seeing those balls flying. I think we're good to go. How many's in there? 28? Yep. Done. Now, another thing I've learned. See that smokestack shadow? Look how it's on this rail car. So you can actually... I've actually... I really wish you could replant some of the trees that I cut down because at times, like, that shadow is telling me, like, the midway or darn near midway is, is right there. So let me slow down a lot. All right, I can see that shadow is on that. Boom. Let's just stop here. The shadow's kind of in between those two last cars. Because I know that where that shadow is here, I can tell that we were pretty close to in the middle at that point. So there we go. So we dropped off 50, and we're going to process, you know, a bunch of that stuff. So let's head on back up. Now we need to flip the flipper, but everything else should be good to go. So in this case, the flipper is right, the one that's right after the water tower there. close to right after it anyway. There we go. So in the grand scheme of things, you can see where it's not really, again, I don't feel like the switching could be made easier. And sir, that's a pain to run over there and do it. But 
I don't know, for the next three trips or two more trips, I'm not going to have to flip anything but that flipper. You know? Let's see, how are we doing on fire? Yeah, we definitely want more, especially because we're uphill. We'll give it four. That'll effectively, that, that should get us going pretty good the whole way up there, I think. Like I said, it's a little bit shorter trip than and all the way over from the smelter. Or from the, this is the smelter, from the sawmill. Within the bounds of what won't derail us, we definitely want to try to get good speed coming around this around this turn because we're heading back up a pretty steep initial part. But if you get a decent run, you don't have to go nuts. Once I get past the straight, I'll give it give it the juice until we get up there. You don't want to be going too slow, you know, at this point. I mean, you'll make it up either way with this. It's not like we have that many cars with us. Let's make sure everybody's coming with us before we go too far. I'm going to try to just keep booking right around this turn and this next one. It's been working out pretty well the last couple trips with those, so we'll see how it does with these cars.
Full power. This is my little tiny downhill section, which I should probably put on the list of things to just straighten out. <laughs> just make that constantly uphill and or flat. made it almost. We have all the cars. I guess I shouldn't say that till I check and all the cars. I haven't been losing cars as much. I don't know if that's because they improve things or whether I'm a better train driver. Possibly a little bit of both. Those things are not mutually exclusive. All right, so we're going to go in this way. We definitely want to stop and get water. So I am going to take the next two trips back down there. And then the debate will be, what do we do with these cars once we get done? And I think what I would like to do is leave them at the iron mine, run back and get the cordwood, and we'll get the cordwood going. So let me, uh... Oh, stop, stop, stop. You see what I mean? I mentioned that in the beginning. I tend to... I tend to overrun these a little bit. I could possibly have made that work, but... Also like to put that in forward because I need it there. So there we go. So rather than show you this three times in a row, you can always, if you want to see what I'm about to do, just go back into the video until you're seeing the loop. <laughs> Not to be mean about it, but it will be probably pretty repetitive. If something exciting happens, I'll definitely let you guys know and start recording again. But otherwise, most likely, the only thing that probably will happen is if I forget to flip the flipper and I derail myself and that's you guys have seen that enough times if you've watched the series so, all right so I'll see you somewhere along the lines I guess maybe down at the smelter then maybe we can run back together and just hook up to the cordwood but that'll probably be enough for this episode at that point and then we'll uh we'll do cordwood and get our iron and rails and all going but but I'll probably see you down at the smelter in a few minutes And we're just pulling in with the second or third, depending on how you look at it, third total trip of uh, five carts of iron ore. And I think we're, let's see, I don't know exactly how this is going to work out, but are we down? To, we're no more cordwood, I think, right? Because, yeah, we dropped off 100 and we had 84 in here. So, oh, wait, a little bit more. Okay, so that's because we only used 80 because we already had 20 rails. Let's get some braking action going on here. All right, so we're filled up on the rails over there, I'm sure. Then how much do we have here? Oh, we can hold a 1,000, so it's not an issue to drop all these. Why was I thinking we could only hold 100? I don't know. And this will get us up to 70 
over here. And then we'll have four cord wood. I want to write this all down on my spreadsheet so I don't forget. We pull right up to the edge of the steps like before. Give it more break. It's not that exactly. As long as I think this is halfway on there, I think you should be good. Right, is that what I'm getting? Yep, 22. Nope, didn't get that one. Still didn't get it. I think down seems to be a better way to go, but there we go. We're getting it. So I want to leave this guy in here. I don't know if I can pull forward enough. We might have to back it back up. See, little balls are stopped moving so we can go. All right, again, this lining up this shadow <laughs> onto the rail car is perfect. So we're, I'll try to keep it a little bit closer, especially if I, I think we don't, we're going to hit. I'd rather not have to back up because I want to see how that works out. Yeah, definitely would want to make this longer, this bypass longer if you... Yeah, see if we... Nah, we should be in real good shape anyway. Yeah, that's, I don't think that'll... All right, that's not going to interfere with any other trains, so that's perfect, because we will be coming in and out of here. We definitely could have left it a little further back. Yep, there's the balls. All right, so there we go. So let's go take a look over here and confirm what we know. So we should have added 80 to each pile. So that means the rail should be at 100. And this should be at, what, 94? Yep, let me take one second to write all that down. So on my little spreadsheet here, I'm going to put four cordwood, 70 iron ore, 94 iron and 100 rails so that's kind of perfect we do need to get in order to do this we're going to need to get 100 i'm sorry 200 barrels of oil which is 100 drop-offs at the oil refinery we need 150 steel pipes but we also need an equal amount of coal right because we need to make 150 steel pipes and we're going to need coal for that so in order to do that, we get the rails. It all the rails balance out fine, but we do need to get 150 coal down to the ironworks, which is for a future episode. But so we're in good shape. This is perfect. Oh, is there still? I guess that's just normal. <laughs> I was going to say, it looked like there was still stuff in there. The way to see if there's anything still left would be to look there. Oop, breaks over here. Go. Put the brake on the front and back. That way they don't tend to unlock when you restart your server. And once again, I'm going to try to do this. Let's uncouple that guy. And I need to throw some switches out here. Whatever it takes, we're going to go take a ride back to the yard. And should be pretty quick to back in there, I think. Might have to do some more switch flipping. I already filled us up with some water and firewood. So this is the flipper here needs to flip Just out of the principle of flippage. This one needs to send us in a new direction. And I think this one's wrong as well. All right. So the next trips will be cordwood. And I've definitely tried to give it some thought. I really don't see a massive difference. I think leaving these cars here is fine. We go get the cordwood. You know, it's unfortunate that we're riding back empty. Maybe at some point in the future, I'll consider. Let's see how much of this we have. Two. Let's just give it two more. It's a pretty short trip. But I don't want to run out on this hill or anything. Oh, you know what the other thing we need to do? Let's pull forward and out of here. Then I need to flip these two switches just so that we're in bypass mode for the next time we come in. Since we're already going slow and without a load, it's easy to stop and start. So we'll... The more I set my switches up for future me, <laughs> the, the less likely I find that I am to, to derail myself coming into one of these. So like if I didn't, every time I switch this, I always switch this one. 
Okay, just so that you just know that if you see one's good, then you're good down the other end. There we go. So as far as the cordwood, we need to get at least 50 cordwood up here. We really don't necessarily need cordwood. The firewood lasts so long in these firewood things, but I think if we run up here, we'll get some cordwood into the firewood as well. And I definitely am thinking that we're going to do two things. If you take a look real quick, we have $6,200. That is enough for a new train. However, I was thinking that because this is the worst, the trip we're about to take is the worst of all the cordwood drop oh that's not true we have i have another cordwood i have another firewood thing up at the coal mine hmm well i was thinking of designating this guy as our cordwood train right whatever we need cordwood we send this guy out to deliver it i think that's a reasonable job and then we'll go get a new locomotive at that point after we do our cordwood deliveries at that point we'll also have the smelter you know, ready to go for, for trips further south as far as the iron and the and the rails will be ready to go up to the cord up to the coal mine. But I was thinking of designating this guy as the cordwood train. I don't think it's too OP if we were to put eight cordwood cars on here. If, if they ever nerf it, we'll just deal with that at that time, right? It's not we're really not going to be delivering cordwood up to the coal mine very often. It's probably, you, know, you almost really don't need it up there. Um, I think the only one that I kind of, I, I, you definitely need to have a, well, we'll talk about the cordwood when we get to the cordwood. Let me just get up this hill. slow down a bit stop making so much of a racket i try not to compete over that even though i've gotten my microphone set up i think you guys can hear me but i do try to talk loud too if that's going <laughs> that's all a bit of a pain so in any event i think again that it's going to be easier just to go forward instead of looping around there though 
if I had left it a little bit better. The problem is like these switches down here cause you to run all the way down there and make sure that they're flipped where these I can see them a lot more easily. Like I know this one is I know this one's flipped the wrong way. Won't take us long to stop with just the locomotives. We can kind of race right up there. All right, I know that other one's flipped the wrong way, but I can see all those real quickly and easily and make my judgment. All right, we'll flip it. A little pain to have to flip this one up here twice. It would certainly be nice to have a helper who could run ahead of these things, and then as soon as you got up there, you'd flip it so I could see where people complain. But I don't think it's fair to say, like I've said in other videos, I don't think it's fair to say that it's a solo player's issue because I know where all these switches are. And if you're not if you're not solo, if you're if you're multiplayer, you don't know if someone's flipped these switches because they were doing their own thing and is that right? Yeah. So we're gonna come back and then uh, you know what we're gonna run might as well run down this way. Cause we have to flip from going in we were coming back out of the one that had the hoppers in it. All right, so these all look good, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. No, no, okay, let's flip. Yeah, no, this one is in. Now, this one, let's just flip this one out, even though it doesn't matter right now. This one needs to get flipped. This one, right? Yeah, because we're going to go in there and get those. Now, we also need to go up and get more cars, which maybe I should have done that first. But I'll, I think I'll do that in between the episode. And we'll just come back and we'll maybe we'll even buy the cars together. I do like buying things on camera. We could maybe even buy our new new train in anticipation. I'm not sure exactly how these videos are going to go if I'm going to get your comments, but let me know if you do have a thought on what our next real locomotive should be. Finally be done. 40 some episodes or <laughs> and, and 100 and some hours and I haven't even driven another locomotive besides these Betsy's. But it just goes to show how much I enjoy the track laying and the the whole thing. And I like And I like being comfortable with my I'm also the kind of person that keeps a car for 20 years if it if it is agreeable to that. That's one of the reasons, you know, if I have a big complaint about the electric cars is I don't put a huge number of miles on my vehicles. And if I have a complaint, it's that those batteries go bad regardless of what you do. And I don't want to have to spend six or eight thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars on a new battery just because my car sat there for eight or ten years and got thirty thousand miles on it or something other than that i think electric cars are a good idea I, I, and i say that nothing to do with like environmentalism even like I mean, that is a factor don't get me wrong but it's i think it's we only have a limited amount of like of gasoline oil whatever on the planet and eventually it will run out and if a lot of people can use electric cars that are powered with nuclear power or solar or whatever else it is that aren't powered with fossil fuels and i know a lot of our fuel comes from coal or a lot of our electricity comes from coal but at the same time it's still I just think it makes sense. Right? It just makes sense as a species that we wouldn't burn up all of our resources just because we can, right? Especially not when we start start to have the capability to not do that. Like, hopefully, we can make some more strides with the battery technology as time goes forward because I think that's a that's a problem. But I also don't, I, and there's other problems. There's, I, I know people that live in the cities who are really the ones that are most prone to be able to have an electric car because they're 
trips are usually very short compared to people that live, you know, further out in a rural area where you, I lived in a place where if you wanted to go to the regular shopping and that was before there was a whole lot of the internet stuff, there was some Amazon and whatnot, but not, it wasn't like it is today. Um, you had to go 80 miles, you know, and that's, it's not so bad. You could charge up your car and you could do it, but you know, that's, that's quite a bit of travel and other people have it worse than that. So. Now that wasn't normal. An electric car would have worked for most days, but you know, if your vehicle doesn't take you to where you need to go shopping very well, then that that's an issue for you. You know what? I'm going to stop just ahead of time here. And, yeah, no thing there. Yeah, let's get a pin in. So I guess the thing that I'm going to need to do. is to probably the well yeah i still don't have a way to really oops let's kind of hit that a little bit hard didn't i i really don't have the greatest way to get from here up to the depot and that does seem to come up fairly often is that a yeah or often enough that it's a thing to where we buy the new trains like And again, if we do buy the new locomotive, we could maybe use that to bring this down, huh? Yeah, what if I ran up there as opposed to my normal? Then again, we could always drag this back. But since this is already hooked up, I might just run up there and do that. But we can decide that in the next episode. This one's well over the normal one hour time. And there we go. So we have another step done. It doesn't seem like a whole lot, but that was... You know, that was a lot of work when you get down to it. I mean, that was on the neighborhood of five or six hours <laughs> to get to that point. And we've already, you know, we already had this lumber uh, in this yard. Like, I didn't have to make too many trips. So this was quite a lot of work to get to the point we're at. But we're also rewarded with in the neighborhood of, what, $5,300 or something like that since when I started at $900. So we're making good money with our little trips here. And hopefully that will continue. And I hope you're enjoying it. Let me know if you have any comments on our next locomotive. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.